So we have one and a half weeks to move out of our studio and to pack up all of our stuff and be ready for Australia. Can we do it? Can we sell all of our shit? Okay, so I need to update you guys. Yesterday, we had such a productive day. Jessie was like all day clearing out our studio and luckily we are in Jessie's parents' house for the next 10 days because his parents are away. So kind of like house sitting. But our studio is connected to their house. Does that make sense? Anyway, this studio that me and Jessie have been living in for the past like year is now just a bedroom. Like we've cleared out all the kitchen stuff and it's just so nice to have a separate bedroom to the kitchen because it just wasn't nice and it was actually very depressing just living here working here cooking here doing yoga here look it's now a freaking bedroom so i can actually walk into my side of the bed like before i used to have to just clamber into bed because it was pushed against the wall i'm so happy so this is our new bedroom not our tiny home anymore, it's just our bedroom. I am so excited for this new chapter of my life and going back to Australia and seeing how things go, but it's stressful moving. There's a lot to do and a lot to sort out, especially in a small time frame of one and a half weeks. And I heard somewhere that moving is one of the most stressful things that you do in your lifetime as well as getting a new job and when I go to Australia I will be looking for new work opportunities you know getting a new job moving somewhere across the world somewhere new that I haven't really been to before and kind of establishing myself there and finding friends and things like that it is quite a big challenge and stressful but one thing that i know will definitely help is talking about it and just sharing how i feel especially with a professional so in an hour i've actually got a therapy session with my therapist from better help and that leads me to the paid partner of this video which is better help so like i was saying Talking to people when you're in stressful situations or you've got a lot on your mind is so helpful. Jesse said the other day that problem shared is problem halved and I thought that was so nice. I open up a lot to Jesse, my partner. Sometimes I do feel like I'm burdening him. And even though I'll share a problem with him and the problem might be halved, but really I'm just sharing my problem and then he starts like focusing on the problem and what I'm struggling with and that can affect him too. And it does feel like sometimes you're burdening people with all your problems and struggles and I totally get that and I feel that way. I just feel like it is so important to have a professional who is unbiased in their opinion, who can just listen to you and give you helpful unbiased advice and that is really valuable. If you've ever been thinking about talking to a therapist, then I highly suggest talking to a professional and especially on BetterHelp because you can just talk to a therapist from the comfort of your own home. That's what I do. I just go on my laptop, I do a video call with my therapist and it is nice to be in your own space. I do feel safe and that I can open up because, you know, I'm in the comfort of my own home. First, you go to their site. You can use my link, betterhelp.com forward slash Erica. I'll leave the link in the video description. Then you just answer a few questions. It's really simple. And you're usually matched with a therapist within 48 hours. So it's very quick and easy. Again, visit betterhelp.com forward slash Erica and enjoy the special discount code on your first month. I love you all. Look after your mental health. And don't worry, we're all struggling with things. I'm stressing out about moving. And I just thought, vlogging it could help maybe someone else going through stresses too so don't worry about it but yeah i've got my therapy session in about half an hour so i'm just going to do some work quickly and then get to therapy Woo! i've got this butterfly suitcase full of clothes and shoes that i'm going to take to the charity shop operation get rid of everything we own some vintage packages that need to go off operation has begun Operation has begun. Say hello, Jesse. Hello, Jesse. We sold our car, but luckily we can use a very nice Land Rover in the meantime. I feel like a rich bitch. Do you feel like a bad boy? Oh, well, I'm a bad boy, all right. I always feel like a bad boy. <laughs> all right, off we go. We're at the drop-off center. We're at, where are we? We're at Really we're cool. at the supermarket and they have this massive bin where you just drop off your old clothes. So we're going to see if this little suitcase can fit in the bin. Okay, ready? So I did just go to a charity shop and they said, no, we can't take any more donations. So I said, fuck you then. I'm going to put it in the bin. In a donation bin. Stuck. 
looks good. It's stuck. Please tell me I'm not the only one who experiences this. Okay, so I've got Vinted, which is where you sell your used clothes and stuff like Depop. On Vinted, I put up a bunch of my clothes. Usually they're like brand new. Anyway, good stuff, okay? Say I put it up for like 15 pounds. Why? Why does everyone on Vinted just barter? I mean, it is fun, don't get me wrong. Like, I do love getting a bargain. Okay, if it's up for 15 pounds, they'll say about 12 pounds. I'm like, uh, what about uh, 13.50? And then you get an accept an accepted offer and I'm just like what was the point in that I mean they did save a bit of money but honestly it happens on every single item people knock it off like by a pound and I'm just like what is the point so I just feel like vintage people are so freaking cheap they love a bargain they are there to barter I'm all here for it but you know what I'm gonna stick to my deals sometimes I'll accept a lower offer but you guys are cheeky you guys are cheeky, but it's just funny. I've just noticed it and I just thought, do you experience it too? Are you the person who is bartering and always getting a bargain? Let me know in the comments, but yeah. That's what I've been experiencing, just haggling with people online to get my freaking clothes. It's raining, but you know what? We are at an indoor skate park. In there is a sick ass skate park. And we're meeting with a friend. And I think it's important in between like chaos and stressful times, like moving, you've got to just, you know, carve out some time to have some fun. So that's what we're doing today. We're gonna have a little bit of play time. Oh, oh shit. Hello? Are you okay? Are you okay? Stay. Stay right there. Don't fall down. I got my carver, surf skate. I don't think I can take this to Australia because it is so heavy. Yeah. So I think I'm going to just leave it here. In England, I don't know. Sell it. I, I can sell it. I think gonna sell it. Maybe I should sell it. I'll be sad to sell it, but I'll just get a new one in Australia. So all is good. It's so funny. So I've pretty much packed most of my stuff in my suitcase ready for Australia, right? And I've realized that it's obviously a lot of summer clothes because where we're going to be staying, we're further up north which means it doesn't really have a winter. It's kind of just hot all the time, which is going to be weird. But I was looking through my suitcase and all of my summer clothes are just so bright and colorful. It's definitely normal to have dark for winter and then like really colorful, bright clothes for summer. I just feel like I have a completely different style. Yeah, I've kind of packed everything. I got all my zincs. I've got my surf hat that I'll need. I got my freaking shorty wetsuits. Monopoly deal is a must. This cute spring suit. I don't know why, but before I do a big trip, especially Australia, and I'm gonna go out for quite a while, I like to pack my stuff like a week or so in advance. I also really like to put out my airplane outfit. So I'm like, oh, my trainers. And then I just like fold it in a pile and I'm like, that's my airplane clothes. And then I just get excited guys and I like to prepare. But we've still got so much to do and time is running out. I'm really trying to embrace this last week that I have here in England and just really appreciate everything because nothing lasts forever. Enjoy the now because it's ever changing and I honestly don't know what to expect for Australia but I am so excited and I just can't wait to meet friends and family out there, be in the sunshine, and just start a new freaking life. And I'm so happy you're here joining me. Housewife. Can I say that? Is, that? is that allowed to be said? I am cooking one of my favorite quick and easy meals. Do you care? I don't know, but I'm gonna share it with you anyway because you're watching my channel, so. It's called a tofu tikka masala, and it's so freaking good. I love it so much. And it is so simple. It's actually tin tomatoes, pepper, blended up spices in the pan with the blended up shit and then coconut cream and maple syrup oh my god and gone are the days of recipe books am i right i mean who has recipe books these days i have some but i never ever go through them anymore i'm surprising myself because you know what i do you know what i do i go on my freaking phone 
and I go to Instagram. And I've got saved on my Instagram food. Oh, all these recipes are basically from the same girl that I follow. Oh my God, look at this. She's just making this yummy ass curry. And I just get the recipe from an Instagram reel and she just writes it in the caption. And I've actually memorized it now because I've had it so much. I could actually link it down below if you're interested or just, yeah. Audrey Lillian, she has some great recipes. I get my recipes off of like reels and TikToks. Isn't that crazy? Times are changing, guys. I don't know if you're ready for it. Oh my god, I just burnt my tongue. That's hot. Oh my god, that's so good. Let's just let that simmer. I'm gonna go have a shower because I'm 20 AF after skateboarding and being in these clothes all day. Like, can you see? Okay, you can't see, but I, I have had sweat patches all day in this top. Now it's dried up and it just smells. Okay, great. <laughs> and then look at the tofu that's been in the air fryer. Oh my God. Um, it's literally just tofu coated in lots of lovely spices and then we air fry it and oh my God, it's, oh my God. Ah! I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry. You know when you're so hungry, get ready for this. Okay, you ready? Curry is simmering. Shower, wash hair, comfy clothes, eat the food, watch telly. It's not just like the best. It's my favorite time of day. This is my favorite time of day, is to eat food, put on comfy clothes and watch telly. Like, this is why we are here on earth. I just woke up. <laughs> Can you tell? We've got less than a week now. Pretty much done everything. Who knows, have we ever really prepared for stuff like this? Have we ever truly prepared? I don't think so. Sometimes what I like to do is go through my oracle deck. They just give you a nice message. So, here's an oracle card. Let's see what it is. This lovely card in reverse. I love these birds and I swear I see them like the birds of prey. Oh. Another fact, I like birds. I think I'm into bird watching. Why do I like birds so much? Anyway, another fact about me. So I just go through the book and it just tells me like what this card means, but you can just interpret it how you want. It's time to take it to your mat. The mind has been in control for far too long. I do overthink a lot. And it will never answer the questions of your soul's calling. To talk to the spirit, you must talk to its home, the body. The solutions are not outside of yourself. They're in this very temple you abide in. Through movement and breath, you create space between the inhales and the exhales to discover your truth. The mind will tell you stories until the end of time. The body cannot. If it's been a while since you've done an asana, a yoga practice, consider this a request from the spirit reminding you to come back home to yourself. Okay, so I'm getting the message that need to get out of my mind and into my body this week um, and I think that's such a great message because you know you can overthink things I like to plan ahead and try and figure everything out in my head really I'm just aimlessly worrying about stuff so good reminder to exercise and move your body and just be like in the present yeah I like that card do you ever try and like talk yourself out of doing something that you know makes you feel good? I do that like every day with yoga. I don't know why it is so hard sometimes to roll out my mat, but the oracle cards and my spirit guides were talking and they were like, do yoga this week. Get back into yoga. So, and also what's funny, I actually did just post a yoga video on my, on my channel. It's a yoga for surfers, like after a surf, stretch it out. It's a 20 minute routine. I think you'd really like it. Definitely go to my channel and save it or I'll leave it up here. I look tired. <laughs> I went to bed so late last, last night, like what? And that is honestly the latest I've gone to bed in a very long time. But I'm kind of thinking there's no point getting into a good sleeping routine because on Sunday I'm flying for like two days to get to Australia 
and when I get to Australia, the time zone is just so opposite. Like right now, it is nighttime in Australia, and you're getting ready for bed. Like just it just fucks up your body so much and your sleeping schedule. It's crazy, you feel like drunk when you're jet lagged. Like that's how bad the jet lag is. You feel drunk and like delirious, disorientated. You don't know what's going on. You might begin to laugh hysterically and start crying because you're just so tired and you don't know what the time is, what day it is. And you're just like, why am I awake? when I should be asleep. So I'm just thinking, why do I need to get into a healthy sleeping routine this week when it's just gonna get fucked up next week? I don't know if that's the best way to think about it, but that's how I'm feeling. <laughs> Morning routine, let's do a yoga stretch. I always like to do it on YouTube. I always like to follow along. So I just don't wanna think, I just wanna be guided. because YouTube used to be my most followed platform, right? And that was like my main, you know, this was my main deal, like vlogging, uploading weekly, all that, all that stuff. And now it's funny because it's like one of my least followed platforms. Like all my other platforms like Instagram and TikTok have just overtaken it so rapidly and quickly. It's just weird. You just don't know what who's gonna follow what platform but yeah thank you so much for your support i do enjoy vlogging it's just like the editing takes so long because i personally love watching youtube videos and there's something so like i don't know so special about like setting up your laptop putting on a really nice vlog from your favorite youtuber getting a cup of tea and just like zoning out like i love that and i think it's i feel like youtube is the only real healthy platform beside pinterest i just think it's inspiring, it's long form, like, I remember someone said, like, think of the last YouTube video you watched, and I could think instantly, oh, it was from this girl Morgan Adams, um, it was a vlog about her house, you know, like, I could literally recall the whole vlog, and then it was like, think about the last video you watched on TikTok, and I was like, I don't fucking know, I watch hundreds a day, so it just doesn't stick in your brain, but I feel like YouTube is just way more of a connection, and you remember, which is, I wanna remember guys, I don't wanna forget. So I hope you guys remember my videos. That would be a dream come true that you remember my videos. My voice is cracking because it's the morning, I've got morning croaky voice, oh. Hey, I meant to be getting rid of stuff, right? That's been the theme of this vlog. But I just got this in the post it's from gander which is a really cool clothing company um from australia i really like their stuff anyway i picked it up and i was like oh my god it is so heavy and we just weighed it it's four kilos fashion show fashion, fashion show. show fashion, fashion show, show jesse wants a fashion show at fashion lunch show. fashion show fashion show at lunch i would love to do a fashion Nice. I saw this on their um, Instagram. Oh, I got some shorts for Australia. Oh, I saw this as well and I wanted it. They know my style. It's a long sleeve, but just like this line that goes down. I think it looks really cool. Some more cargo pants. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, a nice knitted jumper. <laughs> I feel so spoiled. Outfit change. Outfit change. Outfit change. Oh. <gasps> Oh my god, I need to show the full fit. The full fit. I love it! Oh, a denim jacket! Very, like, there's a lot of greens going on. Oh, this looks kind of like a proper jacket in here. Holy sh! <laughs> wow! Oh my god, this is. Oh my god, I'm. I've actually got like really cool trendy clothes. Yeah, pretty good. The 
for so long I've always just had like secondhand clothes and like hand me down so it feels so nice to like finally be adding new trendy things to my wardrobe because I usually just wear the same outfit like over and over again but now I've got multiple outfits <gasps> yes hey this it's pretty good on the plane I think yes that is such a plain top isn't it a plain top yeah like on the flight Okay. Bye. Love you. <laughs> Saying goodbye to people is weird when you don't know when you're coming back. I know me and Jesse will come back at some point. Don't know when. I didn't think I'd be back in Australia a year later from when I last visited, but here we are. We're going back. So literally I don't know what me and Jesse's plans are we're constantly changing plans and that's why it's so exciting to follow my journey on YouTube and Instagram and TikTok bye see you in Australia ah! jokes I'm not really gone haha <laughs> you thought you could get rid of me but not today okay I'm gonna go now bye <laughs>